you're not alone. If you need someone to talk to today, please contact Crisis Services Canada by either calling them at 1-833-456-4566 all hours of the day, or you can text them at 45645 at 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Time. Remember, you're not alone and Crisis Services Canada is here to help. Good evening, everyone, and welcome into this week's edition of The Prospect Show on ASTV Productions. I'm your host, Graham Forsyth. Tonight's episode is going to be a good one. I want to thank you all for tuning in and choosing ASTV Productions on your Friday night to watch this edition of The Prospect Show. Hopefully, everyone is doing well out there and staying safe, too, and hopefully you are all ready to just sit back, relax, and enjoy tonight's edition of The Prospect Show with number 19 of the Shattuck St. Mary's Hockey Academy 14U Sabres, Cole Eiserman. Cole is a 2006 born forward from Newburyport, Massachusetts, and this kid is already at NHL size. He's six feet tall, 182 pounds, which is absolutely ridiculous for a 14 year old. It's just going to be crazy to see how much bigger and stronger this kid is going to get in his next few years here in his hockey career. But let's move into just what Cole was able to do this season. Well, he was only able to put up 154 points in 50 games played, having 90 seven goals and 57 assists and in the youth nationals tournament where this team ended up going to dallas texas to compete for a national championship cole led the tournament in points and goals putting up 23 points 14 goals and having nine assists as well in six games played en route to this team winning their first national championship at the 14u age level since 2016 for this program and for Cole this season, I had a chance to ask him about how the season went with Shattuck St. Mary's Hockey Academy, as well as this team's run to winning a national championship in Dallas, Texas, here on this edition of the Prospect Show with Cole Eiserman here on ASTV Productions. Wow! Joining me now is Cole Eiserman, forward for the Shattuck St. Mary's Hockey Academy Sabres 14U program, and just a, an unbelievable season for you guys, Cole, just going all the way to nationals, just rolling every team that was in your way, basically, just uh, we'll, we'll get into just the the nationals later on in the show, but Cole, I, I, I'm assuming you're in a dressing room right now, uh, What, where exactly are you? Uh, yeah, I'm actually, uh, this is like a walk and over from our locker room. I uh, just got done skating, so I had to hop on with you. Right on, and, and I'm happy that you're here today because it's going to be lots of fun just getting to talk about the, the season you had with Shattuck and just talking about the, the Nationals as well, a bit about just where you played before joining Shattuck too. So just starting off with that, uh, where where exactly did you play before joining the St. Mary's squad? I mean, you you were born in Newburyport, Massachusetts, so I'm assuming yeah, the you were playing on a hockey team there, right? Yes, I, I played for the um, Middlesex Islanders team up where I'm from. Um, it's a great team. I played there for like six, seven years, so it was a lot of fun there. I had a really good time. And what what were those experiences like just playing for that team throughout the seasons that you had a chance to play for them? Um, at the beginning, we weren't very good, but um, we kind of stuck with it, and I feel like we got some more guys, and we ended up winning the league um, my fifth year in, so that was awesome. 
And what was that like, just the, the journey of trying to get better as a team and then it all came together in that, that season for you? Yeah, I mean, it was tough, but we all battled through it and it was, it was a really good time when we won. So just what, what went into your decision to join the Shattuck St. Mary's program? Of course, this is a school that's uh, been able to have players like Sidney Crosby, Nathan McKinnon, and a number of, a lot of NHL talent has come through Shattuck. Just what was the, the decision that went into it for you to, to join the St. Mary's team? Well, I mean, there's a little options, but um, I, vis- I came out here and I, I fell in love right Immediately, me and my dad looked at each other and knew that this is the place um, I wanted to play uh, my next year here. So, pretty easy choice knowing all the guys have been here and all their history and everything. So, it was awesome. And what exactly for you was that moment where you, you found out you, you just fell in love with this program? Right. I mean, so we skated right as I, right, right as I came here. And, I mean, that's, that's what you want to see when yeah. you're a hockey player and you're skating right away. Yeah. Every so, it was awesome. Yeah, and can you just talk about the, the coaching staff and just the impression that they made on you when you were just in, in your first visits with this team? They, they were awesome. They came right up to me and shook my hand, looked me in the eye. It was, it was great. Um, they told me that they, they would really develop me as a player, and that's, that's what you want to hear because you come here to play um, at a high, high level and you want to be the best. So that's why um, it was great coming with all the coaches here. And just with you, them just shaking your hand, just treating you like a professional, is that a, another reason why you thought that this would be a good fit? Is just how this coaching staff handles themselves, and I'm, I'm just assuming that translates over onto the ice with the product that they have. Yes, 100%. And, um, it's all business here. This is obviously messing around, but obviously when you step in the rink, it's, it's time to work. And we, we, we did that all year, and that's why we won the national championship. Let's speak about the development that you were able to have this season and just on the on the score sheet, you put up a ridiculous 97 goals, 57 assists for 154 points in 50 games played. Just dive into just how you were able to develop throughout this season with this this program and how you were able to, to have the type of season you were able to have. Um, I mean, we're, we're on the ice two, two to three times a day. I mean, it's, it's amazing. We wake up in the morning, you skate, you go to school, come back, skate again, you can go to school. Um, then you have practice, obviously, at the end of the day, but we do film. Uh, coaches always talk to you about what we need to work on, what, where you're doing good, where you, what you need to work on a little bit. And it's and they make it honestly easy for us, being having all these, these ice sheets here for us. And just uh, just talking about the, the routine, I had a chance to talk to your teammate and your line mate, Macklin Celebrini, back in February, and he said that basically, like, there's skates, there's workouts, and then there's, class, there's classes. Just how, of course, with it being school, but of course, how, how did you feel that you, you handled that transition coming in of just getting used to the day-to-day uh, routine in Shattuck? Um, at, the, at the beginning, it was a little tough because obviously you want to skate, but you obviously have to focus on school a lot. So, but by the end of the year, it made it a little easy knowing that you have from this time to this time to skate, eat, and then you go right to class. And then obviously at the end of the day, when everything's done, you can just skate whenever you want. What was that like getting to just bond with the, the boys, just being with each other pretty much 24-7? Just how, how is that like in, in terms of just creating that dynamic of just that that bond with these boys? Uh, it's awesome. And obviously with the guys we have, and I think I think everyone loves each other the exact same way. Um, it makes it easy. It's a lot of fun at the dorms and then come back to the ice and then we're on the bus together, everything. We do everything together. We go to lunch together. I mean, it's amazing and that's why our team is so good for you 97 goals 57 assists for 154 points just a fantastic goal scorer obviously a guy who can dish that puck as well just speak about who Cole Eiserman is as a hockey player as an offensive talent um I just I just try to play as hard as I can every day and um Obviously, when you're on the ice, you got to work on stuff like shooting the puck, making passes with your teammates, having fun on the ice, and it turned out a little. It turned out really good this year, and I'm excited that uh, hard work's kind of paying off a little bit. We still got a lot of work to do, though. 
could you speak about yourself in the defensive zone, just you as an all-around player out there? Uh, at the beginning of the year, it was a little tough because I wasn't really used to playing a really structured uh, defense. But uh, throughout the year, my coaches really helped me, and I thought at the end of the year I became a um, pretty good two-way player, which is which is good to see because the coaches really loved it and um, decided for me to be able to be like that player. Do you think that having that chance to develop as a more of a complete player, not just an offensive player, but just developing as more of that defensive player as well, that player that can be relied upon in both zones is probably one of the, the best things that you could take away from this season other than just the national championship and the team success? Yes, 100%. Um, you don't really, really look at defense a lot. I feel like if you're putting up a lot of points, but I, mean, I thought it was – the one thing I really need to work on this year. And I ended up getting, I mean, I still got a lot of work to do, but um, I thought I got a lot better at defense and it um, feels good. It feels good. How much did the shock come along this season just from the tape I've been able to see? You just got such a quick release and you got some power behind it as well. Just how, there we go. Huh. <laughs> um, I mean, I was, ever since I was a little kid, I always just loved shooting pucks and obviously just working out every day. And that, that made, I mean, to make it easier working out, shooting pucks outside whenever you get the chance and just kind of watching other uh, NHLers shoot and see how they shoot and try to do that when you're outside shooting pucks. And you got to have fun with it too. So, I mean, you always see me see Matthew shoot the puck. You try to shoot it like him. And um, the next thing comes next. You just you shoot like him sometimes and it's awesome. Yeah, and uh, that, that just goes into the question I got for you is just what what type of player would you say you are? Would you say you're more of that sniper? Would you say you're you're more of that power forward? Just what, what type of player would you would you pin yourself as? Um, I say I'm a probably a power forward because I um I like to use my speed up the ice and then obviously my shot. Um, I like to use that too. So I like to say a little bit power forward, but I'd say I have a little more skill, but um, yeah, probably probably a power forward. And yeah, just from the the tape I've been able to watch of you just on on YouTube this season, uh, just it, it seems like he, you got such a powerful stride. You're quick. You're you're good with your edges. It's just you're already at this uh, at this point in your life. You're only just you know entering the the years into your career where you you know you're you're going to get older and get much better it's just for you to have this type of ability with your skating so early on just dive into to what makes you so so effective out there as a skater and just in terms of just being able to to be so powerful with your stride and to have so much speed um um i mean obviously watching like i love watching uh mcdavid skate they always always love to skate up the ice and I kind of watch them what they do. They use a lot of power through their legs with like crossovers and stuff. So whenever I'm on the ice, I try to do those things. And I feel like my speed um, has gotten a lot better this year, a lot, a lot faster. So it makes it fun once you can do that. And what were the things that went into that of just improving your, your speed and your skating coming into the shadow? Um, just working out, working, um, working on explosiveness and stuff like that. And uh, we have a really good uh, skating coach here who helped us throughout the year. And that made it, um, made it a lot of, a lot of fun and um, helped me out a little bit. Can you speak about how you grew as just an individual this season with just being, being the type of player you were just leading out there by example on the ice. Can you speak of just what type of person this team was getting off the ice? Um, I mean, I, I just try to make sure everyone's uh, everyone's doing good off the ice. Everyone's everyone's good. Everyone's um, having fun, and if they need if they need to talk at all or stuff like that. But obviously, just like having fun with other guys, talking to them, and everything. So I just I try to be as uh, not serious really off the ice. Makes makes uh, makes a good friend and stuff like that. So a lot of fun.
back here on the prospect show with number 19 of the Shattuck St. Mary's Hockey Academy Sabres 14 U team. I've been joined by Cole so far, just talking about uh, just the the type of player he is, just the production he put up this season with Shattuck and just the, the place that he played before playing with uh, the St. Mary's Hockey Academy team, Shattuck St. Mary's. And now we're, we're going to dive into just the, the season that this team had just unbelievable domination 47 one and two you guys put up an insane amount of goals you guys were solid defensively as well and you guys had uh, four players that put up over 100 points so just having this type of talent on paper is always always special but just how was this team able to use this talent to the best of their abilities and put it all together this season in your opinion um i mean no, none of those guys are um, a I type of guy. They're always a, a we, so that made it easier on the ice because no one, no one is all for themselves. So um, having all that skill and all the, everyone wants the, their teammates to be better, it, it makes it really easy because it, it wasn't just that there was one person taking everyone down. Everyone was together, and that's what made us so good. How was this coaching staff able to, to get you guys prepared and ready to play with just the routine before just getting ready for game day and just the the type of routine that they just instilled in, in you guys when it came to hockey this season? Uh, we were never we were never comfortable. Um, in practice, we always went as hard as we could against each other. And obviously with the team we had, uh, with all the skill we have, it, I mean, when you practice against top players, it, and it makes it a lot of fun and it gets you better for the season and you gets you ready for um, what's to come. And um, yeah, they did a good job of making sure that we were still working hard. And even though how good we were, we, we are still, um, still trying to get better throughout the year. It goes to it goes to the old saying: uh, "You practice how you play." And for you guys to just go out every practice and practice hard and not uh, not take not take any practices off. Do you think that that is maybe uh, one of the biggest reasons why you guys were so good was just the, the type of preparation and the determination you guys showed in those practices to get ready for games? Yes, 100%. Um, we, battled, we battled so hard against each other through, through every practice that when it came to games, it was easy. If you're not, um, obviously, not every team's as good as us, so when you practice against us, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to, that we – we fought a battle on the ice and then come out for practice and we'd be best friends again. So it was a lot of good times. And just for, for this team, uh, only one loss on the season came to the Minnesota Blades back on September 25th. And I had a chance to ask Macklin about that game. He said that it just came down to the simple mistakes. You guys got outplayed and uh, mistakes in the defensive zone. So just, just learning to – to take a loss so early on in the season, obviously tough for you guys, of course, but just how, how nice was that to, to get a loss like that so early in the season, just to know that you guys always got to stay on your teams and be ready. I mean, I, it was, it was a good, um, obviously, um, we wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't want that, but, um, yeah. it was good to, to see that we, um, we can't just, we can't just walk in the rink and already have a win that we need to really work hard. And that, uh, after that, we, we didn't lose a game. We tied a few, but um, we really um, played hard every single time and knew that we're not losing again. And just knowing that you guys made simple mistakes in that game, knowing that they, they outplayed you, just what was – how how did the mindset shift after that game? Of course, it was a game just so early on in the season, and one loss isn't going to kill you, but I'm sure that you guys were disappointed in how you played and just – being able to, to take take stuff away from that loss and just to know that we need to be better in our defensive zone and we, we can't take anything for granted out there. Just how how did you feel the, the energy kind of shift after after that loss and just how, how this team came out and played for the rest of the season because you guys didn't drop any games after that? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we're a very competitive group and um, we didn't like the feeling that we had after we lost. So, I mean, that's why the coach so good because we took that game and we um we took it and we um made use out of it and then um next next day we actually played them again and we beat them so um it turns out that we did it we did a good job moving into just you guys going to nationals macklin said that that was a big goal for this team or it was a goal for this team just 
the goal was to make it there. And when you guys finally punched your ticket there, just what was, what was that feeling of knowing that you guys would be going to nationals? Uh, it was a very good feeling. Um, well, that's what you come here to, uh, to Shattuck to do is play in the national tournament, obviously to win it. But um, at that, at that moment, um, punching our ticket in nationals, the first team in the country, that was, that was a uh, really high, a high moment in the year, but we knew that uh, the job wasn't finished. So we had like, a day of celebrating and then back to work again. So that was good. And I'm assuming with this team, like you said, being the first team in the, the country to punch your ticket there, I'm assuming that you guys weren't letting the pressure get to you of just knowing that you guys would have a bigger target on your back being that number one team. No, I mean, that's what, honestly, that's what the coach told us at the beginning of the year is your shot at St. Mary's and you're going to get every team's best. And we, uh, we knew that. So, it was, it was nothing new, nothing we haven't seen before, so we were, we were used to it already. What was it like getting to travel to, to Dallas, Texas, in a season like this where you guys didn't do as much traveling as you would have wanted to in a normal season? Just What, what was that like heading to Dallas, Texas to, to play for something like a national championship? Uh, it was a good time. Um, obviously, all the boys were on the bus together, and um, – kind of settled in um i was obviously all business but um we were all excited we were all having fun on the bus just, just kind of relaxing before um we got there the first day and we practiced so um it was a good time how early did you guys get there before that first game on that uh april 28th wednesday uh we got there a day before we had a practice a really good practice and then um we had a good dinner that night and got ready for that game the next morning and just how how was that energy like in that practice? I, I feel like it was the, the same routine as usual, business as usual. But did it did it feel a bit different knowing that you guys had a, your first nationals game the day after that? Uh, I did. I mean, we we're, were trying to get used to uh, the atmosphere there a little bit, um, but obviously soaking it all in because you don't get to to play in the national tournament a lot, especially with the, the same group of guys. So I mean, obviously all business, but. Um, we're having fun also. And what was that atmosphere like at Nationals in terms of just the, the setting that you guys were playing in? It, I mean, it was awesome. Obviously, all the teams there, everyone, you haven't seen some faces in a while because we've been gone from all your uh, old teammates and everything. So it was good to see everyone. But um, it's obviously good um, to be there and knowing what you're playing for. Well, we're going to dive into the national tournament in just a moment here. We're going to take our next commercial break here in the show. I've been joined by Cole Eiserman, number 19 forward for the 14U program at Shattuck St. Mary's Hockey Academy. I'll be right back with Cole in just a moment here on the Prospect Show. But first, we're going to go to another commercial break. Why go solar? Solar is better than ever. Our revolutionary design and inverter equipment with the latest in solar panel technology for the ultimate in-home and business security. That's right. I said security. Grid security and security of your home are linked. Fortify your future today with a battery backup system. No maintenance. Quiet running. Did you know in Manitoba, grid-connected, off-grid, and battery backup systems are 100% write off in the year you purchase for any company or farm. Do you want to back up your internet, keep your tills running, and the lights on? We can install a system that is right for you with battery backup fully capable of taking on all those essential loads and keeping you running. When you call our experts at Evolve Green, ask about getting your free energy audit today. Call or email today to find out what system works best for you. 1-866-5-EVOLVE or support at evolvegreen.ca. Also, be sure to check out our website at www.evolvegreen.ca.
Cross back show with number 19 of Shattuck St. Mary's Hockey Academy, Cole Lazerman. And Cole, with the type of season that he had, was absolutely sensational. 154 points in 50 games. This team finishes 47, 1 and 2, goes to nationals and just absolutely rolls everyone that was in their way. There wasn't any close games, really. And we're, we're going to dive into that now, Cole. Just what, just that first game that you guys had going up against. Team North Dakota, uh, I'm sure that there were some nerves going into that game, but you guys were probably so fired up to get that tournament rolling in the quest to win a national championship. Just what was it like going into that first game and getting to experience that first game of nationals this year? Um, it, it was a lot of fun. Obviously, that night before was a tough sleep. Obviously, all the nerves, but um, got on the ice and we just we just played how we played the whole year. We were we have we obviously we had our legs because it was our game in nationals. Everyone's excited, everyone's jacked up, and uh, we ended up we ended up having a really good game. So that was a good start. So obviously that first game is very important. Yeah, and you guys set the bar pretty high. Thirteen to one win to start it off. And you talked about nerves the night before. Just when the puck dropped, did you do you feel like the nerves were there in that first period, or do you feel the the nerves go away pretty quickly? Um. I think it's I think it's a, a few shifts, but um, once you get that once you once you get that first hit or you you, you uh, take that first hit, you get right in the game and um, everything just seems natural after that. You don't really think about the nerves about all. You guys go undefeated in uh, preliminary round play, going three and zero. You start off with a thirteen to one win. You follow it up with an eight to two win and an eight to one win. Just sitting at three and zero going into just the the playoffs. Just how how was this team feeling? We were feeling good, but um, obviously our whole year we've we've kind of been like that. Obviously. Um, having a lot of really good games, not really losing. So, but we've been, we knew that, that it was just the start of the tournament. Uh, the real stuff really happened in that quarterfinal game. We just had to get ready for that. Heading into that quarterfinal game against Chicago Mission, a team that you guys have had an experience to play before in the season a, a number of times, just going in, you knew that they were going to be hungry to come out and beat you guys. Just heading into that quarterfinal game where it, from now on in the tournament, everything was, you know, you lose, you're out. Just with the expectation, with the expectation of you guys being the favorite in the tournament, just how how do you feel that this team went out and handled their business with that four to one win? Uh yeah, it was a really tough game. They were they were um they were hard on us every single period, but we um it all comes down to uh, who wants it more, and I felt like we wanted it more. So those those four goals and that uh that one we let up really helped and. We obviously got the, the win, which was very good. And do you feel like it was necessary in a tournament like this to, to kind of have a game like that where it was hard fought? They Even though you guys ended up winning 4-1, to one, it, like you said, it was a hard fought game. Just do, do you feel like that was maybe necessary for you guys to, to kind of have a game like this heading into the uh, semifinal match of this tourney? Uh, 100%. Um... That's what that's what that's what we knew was going to happen. Obviously, our coaches have been through the national tournament a few times, and they knew that every team's going to come hard now. And obviously, they did before, but even harder now that it means something. If you lose, you're out. So uh, we were prepared for that. We were prepared, even if that wasn't a tough game. But every every game is a tough game in the national tournament, so we were ready. And going up against the LA Kings, LA Junior Kings, in that semifinal matchup. You know, with with a spot in the championship on the line, you guys come out, take care of business with a five to one win. Just how how nice was that knowing you guys got this win and you guys were one step away from from winning that national championship? It was amazing. It was a great feeling. Um, it was it was it was, that was another really tough game, but um, after that game, we all we all knew what we were, what the next day was. So we kind of relax a little bit, enjoyed it, but then right back to uh, knowing what we have to do next time. And you spoke about how there were a lot of nerves heading into that first game of the tournament, just knowing that you guys had only one game left and you guys were national champions going up against a, 
a Buffalo Saints team that was in a, a huge battle against uh, their the team that they played in the semifinals, beating them in a shootout. Just knowing that that team was battle tested coming in, just how 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 was the the preparation and just the, the nerves like for that that game the night before? Um, we played it like every other game. We um, we did the same thing that we got. We warmed up. We got to the game, obviously. Uh, you look at the national championship and you get a lot of nerves, but we played it like every other game and we, we uh, really wanted it because we didn't want this whole group to go through this and not win a national championship. And um, we really wanted it and we got what we want. Yeah, and you guys got exactly what you wanted with a 7-2 to two win in that national championship game. You put up a sensational performance with five goals in that game just for you being able to step up like you did in a huge moment like that like you were like you stepped up all tournament long with your 23 points in those six games but especially this game putting up five goals in a championship game just what was that feeling like for you being able to do that on the biggest stage uh it was awesome it was um it was a good it was a good time but um our team really really battled hard and it it, um it uh they Everyone deserves the same uh, credit for that game. Everyone wanted it really bad. Everyone, everyone played um, really hard, and it, and it made it really fun that we won the championship. And just with you scoring five goals, what? how, how did you feel like, of course, like it, it's something that you don't plan heading into a game, but it just seems like everything was going right for you. Was it just a, a combination of you just being in the right places? Was it just with, along with, the, the line you were playing on with uh, Brody Zemer and Macklin Salabrini, was it just one of those games where everything was just going right for this team? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, like I say again, no, we all wanted it, and it, 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 it made it easy for me out there. When I have, an, obviously, those great line mates, that great team, we had our, our goal was playing really good that game, and um, it ended up a uh, pretty good day on the stat sheet. Well, but uh, at the end of the day, that, 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 that didn't really matter because we got what we won in the national championship. Yeah, and for this team, all tournament long, just uh, 7.67 goals per game, so almost eight goals per game, uh, one goal against per game in this tournament. The best power play, most penalty minutes with uh, 73, but had the fourth best uh, PK and uh, probably the best PK in the tournament in terms of just the amount of games he played with a 92.3% PK. Just in terms of in that final game where you guys getting into some some penalty trouble at all, or was that one of those games where it was pretty clean for you guys? Um, obviously, we, we want to stay out of the box, but things, things happen in hockey, and we just had to battle through it on the PK, and we had a really good PK that game, um, and it really helped winning that game was – Everyone really knew what they were doing, and everyone was engaged in the PK, and uh, we were able to kill off those penalties. How huge was it for you guys to have the type of special teams that you guys not only had in the, the season this year, but in the Nationals, uh, especially with just being in those moments where you guys need to go on the power play or need in those moments where you guys need to kill? Just how, how huge were the, the special teams for you guys in this tourney? Uh, they, they were amazing. I mean... We had, I think, four or five penalties in the tournament, uh, championship game. Excuse me, killed them. I think we killed them all off, which is is pretty crazy that we did that because we um. But that just means, I mean, that was the whole year working up with all those uh, practices, working on the penalty kill, power play, and we had, we had um, a couple power play goals that game, which, I mean, that's what it comes down to sometimes in hockey and stuff like that, and uh, it turned out in our favor. What was that feeling like just knowing you guys got the job done, being able to raise that hardware and being the first uh, first team in the, the 14U uh, group in, in Shattuck St. Mary's Hockey Academy, the, the first team to win a championship at that uh, age group since 2016? Uh, it was amazing. Obviously, the whole year we were kind of – all stressed up, um, not because we, we, I mean, we had a really big chip on our shoulder with our team this year. Uh, winning, we really showed everyone that we had the most skilled team, but we also had the most work hard team, and it, it was one of the best feelings in my life, and uh, I'm sure for all the other guys, it was the same thing, and it was, it was just amazing. What was it like in the dressing room with the celebrations that you guys had, just to, to share this moment with basically your brothers at this point? Yeah, 
exactly. It was our brothers now, and um, it, it was amazing. Everyone, everyone had a big smile on their face. There was a few tears shed, but um, it just means we love each other, and it was a, it was a really good time. Anything the, the coaches said to you after the game, just some, some final words from the coach and staff? Uh, I mean, yeah, you just we loved our team. We were, we were a really tight group, um, and uh, that he was just so proud of us, and that was really – it was really great to hear, obviously, as a, as a player from our coach. And just moving back into just the, the stats that you put up, the tournament, just uh, you, uh, Brody Zemer, and uh, Macklin Celebrini, top three in points in the tournament. You guys all playing on the same line. Just you you lead this team in both points and goals. Just how how are you – able to to bring it all together with this line in this tournament just to, to be able for you guys to go out and, and execute at that biggest stage um yeah i mean our line was clicking that tournament we uh we really we really i feel like every single time we're on the ice we're making something happen and it's just because we um we all practices we were trying to do fun stuff and we uh talked to each other after the game before the game what we think we're going to do and we just we play out there like kids and it's fun yeah i was gonna ask you is there a power outage but you're still with us so it's great that uh that you're still with us here cole but yeah just this line absolutely sensational i mean macklin is going to be a a top pick coming up here in the uh, among the top picks in the whl draft come december it's just you're going to do some great things in your hockey career i'm sure and uh you know for brody zemer he's going to do some great things as well a lot of players on this team i i feel like have a bright future and just uh just moving back into just the, the line you played on, just how, how were you guys able to, to click so well as a line and just be so dangerous as you were? Um, we just we just played our game, and, and that, that's just playing hard, playing fast, and making plays around the ice, and it, uh, it, helped, us, it helped us a lot throughout the tournament. It was really good. With you being able to play like – uh, with players like Macklin and Brody, just how much did that do for your development this season, just being able to play with players as skilled as them? It did a lot. I mean, uh, obviously playing with top guys like that is a lot of fun. It, uh, it forces everyone to really, really work hard and make, t- and make a lot of plays and just, just, play, just play like a kid and have fun and um, – Obviously, with with top players, it, uh, it's pretty easy uh, to make plays around the ice if you um, if you play right. And for you, just looking back at this season now, I'm sure that a lot of you guys want to be able to have a chance to do this again come next season. So, what is, what is the plan for this group heading into next season? Are you guys going to continue together with Shattuck, or are some guys going to go their separate ways? Um, it all it all depends on what happens next year. We have uh, we have Chaddock has a tryout your sophomore year, and you just whatever the coaches think, you get put on a team. So um, I'm sure that there'll be some guys on the same team, some guys on not. But um, it's up to the coaches next year, and um, we're just kind of. I mean, I think it's the last time we'll all be together, so we're just having a good uh, last week together. Yeah, for sure. Of course, like you told me before this interview, your last uh, day of classes was today. You got finals coming up, and it, it seems like the year's going to come to a wrap pretty soon here. But, um, yeah, for, for you, Jeff, it seems like you're going to have a lot of options of where to play in your hockey career with the type of talent that you have. So what what would be the goal for you heading uh, moving forward here in your, your hockey career of playing places to uh, – you know, uh, eventually get to the NHL. Have you thought of places where you think could be the best place for you to develop going forward here? Um, I've always obviously wanted to play on the development team. Um, I saw my brother played on it as um, an 18 u player, and um, I feel like there's a lot of great players out of America that play there and end up getting drafted pretty high, so I think it's one of my goals to play on that team. For you, you already got a, a wicked shot, a wicked release. You're already such a great skater. You, you got good hands. You, you're so aware in the offensive zone of where to be to put yourself in the right position to 
to make yourself a, a high high danger scoring threat just for you in terms of the things that you're going to want to work on your game moving forward here in your hockey career, what what are those things going to be for Cole Eisenman? Um, I think that's just the same things because you can't really be uh, too good at something. So obviously you, you, your shot can't be too good. Your hands can't be too too good. You can't be too fast. You can't be too strong. So, I mean, all, all the simple stuff really you never be too good at. So um, just working on those things every day. Obviously watching hockey, getting your IQ up stuff like that uh, just to make you a really good hockey player and what what's the offseason plan gonna be looking like are you gonna look to to get even stronger maybe up the speed a bit what what's the offseason plan gonna look like for you heading forward here obviously um off season is a is a time where you need to work hard and um yeah i mean getting stronger and faster is very important especially when you're getting older and everyone's, everyone's getting bigger and stronger so i feel like that's very important to keep doing that well, cool. It's been awesome having you on the show and tonight's episode joining me here on the Prospect Show. I, uh, it's going to be exciting to see where your hockey career is going to take you because, man, I have a pretty good feeling we're going to be seeing you in the NHL come your draft year and uh, just moving forward after that. It's going to be awesome to see where your career takes you, man. Thank you so much for joining me on tonight's show. Very much. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. That was number 19 of Shattuck St. Mary's Hockey Academy, the 14U team. Cole Eiserman joining me on tonight's edition of the Prospect Show. I'll be right back without Cole to just give you guys some final words on tonight's edition of the Prospect Show here on ASTV. But first, we're going to our final commercial break here on the show. Welcome back to the Prospect Show on ASTV Productions. I'm going to be signing off in just a moment here, but before I do that, I just want to say a few things as always. I want to thank my guest and Cole Eiserman for joining tonight's edition of the show. I want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to the Prospect Show tonight, and I also want to thank our sponsors in Piranata, Fabric Land Winkler, and Evolve Green for sponsoring tonight's episode i'll be back on the network next friday for the prospect show at 8 p.m central daylight time here on astv productions on facebook or you can also catch it on our website at astvproductions.com but until next friday folks i've been your host graham Forsyth, signing off now enjoy the rest of your friday night stay safe out there have a wonderful weekend and until next time i'll see you then